What's up, everybody? You're listening to Where's My 40 Acres, the Boob Tube Podcast. And this week, we're reviewing the blackest show on television right now, FX is on Atlanta. Shout out to Donald Glover, man. I mean, how would you know you were alive unless you knew you were God? Hey, hey. My boy hooked you up. He made you the lemon pepper joints, but these got the sauce on them. Life itself is but a series of close calls. Alright, yo, what's up everybody? And uh we're back with episode four of Atlanta to do these recaps of FX's new great show. Their new black ass black show. Donald Glover and friends and all of their craziness, their shenanigans that they get into living out that black culture. And Tuan, I think you said it. This was a sh- this felt like a short episode. It did feel short, man. Like it felt short. It felt like there wasn't a lot going on, but there was a lot going on. But you know, I remember looking down. I was like, oh man, it's already ten thirty. It's about to go off. That makes sense, but it it did still have. Like you said, some stuff I had to replay it again. Like the whole thing with the um, them going to the um, pawn shop and all of that. <laughs> I was like, "What?" And you know, there was some things I didn't understand, like the Steve. What is it, McQueen? Steve, Steve McQueen. Reference, you know. Black people don't know Steve McQueen. They don't know who he and is. I, and I'm one of them. I didn't know what that was. I had to do a quick Wikipedia search on that. <laughs> Well, could you educate on educate us on that? Because that's a name I've heard, but I have no idea who the fuck it is. He's some white actor. That's bullet man, <laughs> bullet nigga. He was a uh, Stephen Queen. Did a bunch of. I'm sorry, but it, uh, what? What the I fuck? Waiting. I was what the fuck happened? Listen, okay, because people are listening right now. Like, oh, Mike, <laughs> yo, Mike does not watch Atlanta or has not seen this I know episode. Who Steve is. So Mike <laughs> said, "I'm going to mute my mic <laughs> before this episode starts." And I believe I, I wouldn't have anything relevant to that. He has and yet to are. mute his damn microphone. <laughs> he is we, sitting over there all, with his. Muted during the whole intro. He I is sitting over there. No, I don't believe you. He is sitting over there with okay. his finger <laughs> on the button, like just in case. I'm gonna hit this oh. mute button. Was it Bunny Colvin, by the way? What? So anyway, Steve McQueen is a movie star <laughs> in the 60s and 70s. He did a movie called Le Mans, which is really good. I highly recommend it. Also, yeah, he did Bullet. Le Mans. He did Bullet. He did Want It. He was in the um, Great Escape. Yep. Magnificent He's Seven. Yeah. Which Steve I just McQueen. saw the remake of that tonight. So then here's my question. That's the third remake it's of Magnificent Seven. So he that was is. apparently, and this is Wikipedia. He must be extremely people. racist or something. Like what? He said he's he has he's the anti-hero persona. Okay. Kind so of, yeah. I guess that's what his his I guess st- stick was. So that's what he played in a lot of these movies. I'm assuming. I didn't know he was racist. I'm well. I'm trying oh, to I mean, figure was, out because was, like, no, he's, he's just asking like is, why because is he so... right because in this episode there was some mythos behind him that had to that they went into a pawn shop and well first of all Darius had already been talking about him. And then when they go into this pawn shop, the guy's like, I know motherfuckers who come in, and if they recognize that Steve McQueen poster, those, I don't trust them because they're going to try to rob me. He said they ask about it. Yeah, if they they recognize it, then uh, if they know who Steve McQueen is, they're going to try to rob me. So I I don't know if that was in relation to... Steve McQueen He didn't didn't say if they know who Steve McQueen is. He said said black people don't care about that. Oh, that dude. He said, Blair, he said black asked, people don't care he about said, the They McQueen. asked me about the oh, poster. That I then see. I know, he said, then I know they're trying to get me to turn around so they can rob me. Because he basically, I put the poster there because nobody's going to ask me about it because nobody cares. Oh, uh, see, nobody I completely missed that. Now, that I agree with. I was completely, I completely missed that because I was trying to understand what the relation was to Steve McQueen and him being robbed. But now that I'm looking at the angle of that shot, yes, that makes sense. He said they're trying to get me to turn around. Cause that's why that's why um, Ern says I wasn't trying to rob you when he walks away. And I still yeah. didn't get asked, it. Like he, Ern asked him about the poster. I heard it, but I still didn't get it. And now it makes sense. I completely missed that. Like I just I just did. I was too busy trying to figure out why Darius was such a damn 
Steve McQueen fan. There is just no. He makes good that, movies. Everything. And apparently, McQueen is. Uh, they said that he learned mars- the martial art Tang so- Su Do. That's a uh, Bruce Lee's joint, right? From I thought we... three black belt. Don't know. No, it isn't. I'm wrong. I thought it was Jeet Kune Do. You're right, Twan. And I That's guess tight. This is, yeah, it was originally created by Chuck Nor- Norris in 1973. Uh, he was, I knew it was somebody like, like famous as martial arts stuff. Like he's like one of those dudes. He's like a like a like a Burt Reynolds light. Like he never. Yes. Like he he got famous and on, on a lot of stuff. But he never really crossed over a lot like that because he was He's in the time like where they Jason Statham of the seventies. Yeah, he came in a time where there's a lot of other action people. Right. Hmm. So there might be a deep. There might be a deeper meaning to Steve McQueen. I don't know right now, but Steve I mean, McQueen's I know also the name of the guy who directed Twelve Years a Slave, though they are not the same person. That's where I got confused because I thought that's who they were talking about. Like when I was watching this shit, I was like, I feel like they're not talking about him though, because there's no comment about 12 years of anti-black anything in these conversations. I know they're talking about a white person. So what is the relevance? And I'd heard the name Steve McQueen before 12 Years of Slaves came out. So yeah, this episode just had me confused. When it came to that, everything else I got, these scenes with, I just didn't get until the end, where Darius had his uh, his uh, his his uh, what what would you call? It? I don't want to say like intellectual, but he's kind of like a guide, like a life guide moment. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, that's why I had to replay it again. It it was a lot. All right, so let's start from the beginning, and if it sounds like I'm going in and out, it is because. For some reason, Skype is having an old funky ass night, and funky ass night, Skype. y'all's vocals are not coming in as high as they're supposed to be. So I'm trying to adjust them while doing this, while also keeping that funky ass air out the background that people might be able to hear during um, dead zones. Whatever. All right. So uh, I'm just I'm just gonna yell for the rest of the night. Ah, uh, all right. Um, well, could you keep it at a low yell? In the background, so we don't have any dead air. I also wanted to see how long you can hold your bro. Oh yeah, wow. I, I I wasn't mean like a continue. I mean, I like I was. No, gonna you have to circular breathe, so I like Kenny G. I thought you know I was gonna just project my voice. I think I was gonna hit like a low note. I just wanted to know time. if you were a bird or not. That's I just that's what I wanted to know. But oh wow, it's okay if you don't want to accept the challenge. I understand niggas who don't like challenges. See, that's okay. see, see, that's how niggas draw you in, man. I'm above that. Oh okay. All right, real oh, okay, anti real world nigga. All right, so <laughs> episode four, and it, I believe it's called the Streisand effect. Um, and there is that is an actual thing, and I don't it understand is? the definition of it. Yeah, it's an actual event. I do not understand the definition of it. Like Barbara Streisand, Streisand. Let me. Let me get this. How you doing? Let's see. Because it's like effect. because it's like when you try to it's a it, it has trope. it has something to do with things not keeping things in wraps so that they don't go viral. Uh, the the Streisand effect is the phenomenon whereby an attempt to hide, remove, or censor a piece of information has the unintended consequence of publicizing the information more widely, usually facilitated by the internet. So I guess that like, would be. Uh, I mean, it would it would be it would be the what uh what Paperboy is doing the whole thing. Exactly, that's what every it was. time he was every time he was trying to do put something online. Every time he was trying to do something to silence the dude or something like that, it ended up pushing more views to him. Okay, that makes sense. And then, and but, I think but he, I'm I looking think at... he kind of got it at the end, and that's why he just walked away. Well, like, that that was one thing, and then I, I'm also reading something where somebody's like. On Atlanta, this is the title of a review, Darius teaches Earn to trade in the Streisand effect. And I'm trying to figure out exactly where that falls into play. I guess it was the, you, I don't, I see, I don't understand how that. The whole thing about, because, because when he went to the pawn shop, it was like they were, like, first it started with the phone and then he was like trading things for different things that had more value. 
that they knew had more value. But he didn't do that because he wanted to. He did that because that's what Darius's method was to get him more money. He said, he said you want. He said if you just need the money, turn in the phone now and get the money. But if you want more money, I got a plan to get you more money. And he, I guess, you know, Earn took that under. He, he had his own. The way he perceived that was his own. So he thought that meant more money now. And what it really meant was an investment to get more money yeah. later. Maybe that's so I'm not, I, I don't no, know. No, right. I, I still think it's just because it was basically, it got made because dude took a picture of Barbara Streisand's house. And then she sued the photographer so that he would take the picture off his website. And the picture became more popular. The, the 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 news of her suing made the picture become more popular and basically her trying to take it all which is what made the picture go viral and pass it around so and the effort of her trying to get something off or trying to stop something is what made everybody pay attention to it so that's why you know when when the dude when zan first talks to paperboy and paperboy that next morning is sitting there looking through the thing talking about he talking about me like earn is like let it go you're going to make it worse. Let it go. Like, you got to tell him let it go. And he couldn't let it go. I kept guess what, and we, it, we got that it. part. So the Streisand effect is pretty much like all forums when you get, like, <laughs> exposed. She's trying to yeah, basically, when you, like, yeah. you're just leaving it alone. You, so you just leave like, it alone. You you try like to do something. on Twitter and shit, and it just makes it bigger. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's any effort to calm noise that only adds more noise, which is what okay, which is kind of what I think they're saying with Darius and Earn is the fact that his situation got more complicated as he tried to get more money the cheap way. Like if he'd have just sold the phone, he ended up right back where he started at. If he'd have just sold the fucking phone initially, he would have got what he needed. But he basically padded on to the complication of getting the money he just needed. He just needed the money. And it made the situation worse, right? He had to go through all of this shit to end up getting what he was going to get if he didn't initially just went with what Darius had said. Like, if you just need the money, get the money. Then there you go. Okay, that's your trip. Tell him. He did tell him before. Yeah, like, that's, man, your, you that's your trip. Money, if you just, but, and, and it's like with the Barbara yeah. Streisand picture. Just let the picture run the length of it, its course. Let it run its course. And then you don't have to worry about it. But you just you just made this shit way more complicated for yourself to achieve the same result. Just dragging it out. That makes yeah. sense. So but I think you know, that's what they're saying the with the urn. And Darius, that's how that might have been the Streisand effect. I'm reaching here. I'm trying to, I'm trying no, that to get that sense, together. Though. That makes sense, though, because he did tell him, like, you just want the money just leave it alone but you know he thought that he could get more money but get it faster you know so it didn't work out that way yeah all right so let's start with the um beginning of that we just basically explained the whole theme of the episode so that knocked that out of the way um the song opens up with uh i don't know Aaron is standing outside of the episode the song opens up the episode opens up Aaron standing outside of the club and Albert Albert comes out. Is it Alfred or Albert? Alfred. Is it Alfred? Is Alfred? Okay. Alfred yes. comes out. And Paperboy he's, comes out. Paperboy. You can call him Paperboy. We ain't done another song yet. They was actually working on that outside. And Ern is kind of joking. And the song was Pussy Relevance. So intelligent. <laughs> I don't know if he says so intelligent or so intelligence. Yeah, he's basically telling him he's going to add some instrumentals with a recorder. To his band. He he used to play a fly recorder when he was coming up, you know. So you know, add that recorder, that instrument to you know to pussy relevance. Right, and then he was just going to walk off the stage. Song. Great name, like that's pussy relevance. So this <laughs> this goofy <laughs> nigga just pops up beside them, and I love the way they shoot these scenes. Like Man, these, like these, Man. these you're not like you're not using your peripheral vision at all, and then. Next thing you know, somebody's just beside you, kind of like the dude on the bus who just offered him a sandwich out that of nowhere. That was still creepy. Yeah, but this was creepy. Zan's whole scene is creepy in the beginning, like the way he maneuvers on the hoverboard. That whole yeah. shit is creepy. He's creepy, period. And I, I, my only question is, where does nigga get all these hats from? Bruh, he has a hat. He has so many hashtags in this episode. He had Zan Life, 
Zan Stan, Zan Sexual, Zan Lives Matter was his actual Instagram <laughs> name. And then he also had sneakies, which were baby sneakers that they made for adults. Mm-hmm. He called them sneakies. Because Aaron looked bet, at him like, nigga, what? I bet <laughs> he, intru- he introduced himself and it was like, you want a hat? No. And then when Darius came back, he pulled up a different hat. Right, which of said a different uh, color and a different hashtag on it. That hat like, said uh, Zan Life, Zan Stan, I think. The first hat he pulled out <laughs> said Zan Life. The second one he pulled out, which was a different color and a different uh, brand. From the same place. He just put his hand down and pulled up with a different hat. You want a hat? <laughs> and which, anybody here think Darius wasn't going to take that damn hat? No, nah, I mean, why? Who, who, he ain't going to refuse a free hat. Right, who knew? Who thought he wasn't going to take the hat? Yeah, he was going to take the hat. Because he, he looked at it like, he's like, you want a hat? And Darius was like, uh, yeah. Like, That's still right. Yeah. Because <laughs> Zan basically inserts himself. He starts talking to them like he always knew all of them. Bro, he tried right. to Just, turn Darius away because Darius right, wasn't there like, initially. The tried to know, you? like, tried to get buck on Darius. Like, yeah. who the fuck are you? Oh, oh he's like, cool. Oh, he with you? Oh, man, what's up? Wanna then there was, the, <laughs> then there, was, there was that joint confusion shared between Alfred and Ern when Zan used nigga while talking to them. That you could see, like, Alfred's response was, yeah, I don't know you, though. Which was the, should I punch you in the face for using nigga? Because I can't tell if you're black or not. That, that that was black. That's when black people use their own um, internal ancestry.com where they look at you and be like, okay, you ain't white. But you, you might be not black? be black. Could you... But we, you know, we're like we let some brown people get away with it. <laughs> Maybe he pulled a ring. Like he's all these questions are going through his head the entire time he's talking to Zan. Like, cause he he named him. He's like, man, like one part of the episode he said, is he like Asian or something? Then, then he was Dominican. Then he was Indian. Yeah. Then he was Indian. <laughs> they didn't know what that. One dude asked if he was Asian. Out. Like they just they just kept asking what is he, which was a running theme throughout the episode too. Everybody had their own interpretation of what he could be, he's like, which he was a question. The other dude, he's like, "Nah, man, nah, I don't know no Dominicans." <laughs> like, it's, it's like, he just kept running through him. But um, the other thing I thought was funny was he just showed them a random meme that you would see on Facebook, and it was a dude. It was it was a, was it a Simpsons meme? It was a weird oh, meme where like two dudes was freaking. Bay. That's all I know. Well, it was what when Bay is going through your it was DMs. It was it was an author meme. That's what it was. And it showed it showed it said when when Bay is going through your you, DMs. It, catch you catch you going through DMs and it showed a picture of DW looking forward and then Arthur and Buster were like running at the computer. Right. And cause then cause then um Ern Ern asked him he said so is that when you catch Bay or when Bay catches you and he was like I don't know. <laughs> it's funny just, though. <laughs> he just pulled it down. So then he tried to he tried to act like Paperboy had given him his number. He was like, No, I never gave you that. So Ern was like, Well just take my number, you know. And he, they exchanged information and then they had the creepiest rollaway scene. Yeah. And some very <laughs> dope music. But when they when they widened that shot out, when they pulled the shot back on the widescreen, it just was a creepy scene that just had this this dream type effect but it was but you could tell it wasn't a dream because it wasn't like faded they didn't do anything with the colors it's just the way they shot zan in general just the way he moved around and the different camera angles made it weird with all three of them standing there watching him slow roll back which of course is a great opening they cut to the next scene and Ern is listening to i think a song by a group called beach house and it's just an instrumental. Uh, and here's a good time for me to plug all of the music that is on these first four episodes. I have on a Spotify playlist. There are people, and it's called uh, Atlanta Show FX or FX Atlanta Show. It's under my playlist. So if you follow me on Spotify, Phenom Black, you'll see it in my in my playlist list. I posted it on Facebook, posted it on Twitter. There are a bunch of people out here claiming that they have Atlanta playlists. They're like, I got all the episodes, all the songs from all the episodes, and they got like ten songs, and they got like five songs. Like they, like that's that's the first two episodes. They, they no, no, no. There are twenty six 
songs in these first four episodes. 26 I mean, songs that you can get songs. off Spotify. Put it like that. They're actually but, like 30. Yeah, because there are more because there's, there's a lot of just mixtape songs. Right, but they don't exist right. on Spotify. And I'm not, this is not all what Will Brandon is doing his television research. And Deidre, I'll drop you a link later and I'll post this link in the group as well. I found an actual, like a, a, a place where all television shows, music, credits are posted. Whoa, what? Right, for every show. Yeah, it's and pretty fucking cool, man. And where did I get it from? <laughs> when, I, when I was watching the episode tonight, I watched the credits. And I was like, who's go. the music supervisor? Who's the music consultant? I found the music cons- the music consultant, which was like Jim something or Jen something, and she's on Twitter. She got the follow. And in her tweets, she had links. She's like, here's where you can go if you want to find all the music credit. I'm talking about all the music credit. Like there was a dude yeah. in the second episode that was singing Itsy Bitsy Spider. He is credited. That song is credited. Yeah. Like it's That's like awesome. and it's, it's not just the song that you play that you can like hear in your sound, but it's a song that might be playing in the background or something. Song that, that shit. song that somebody else might be listening to. Yep, songs as you he whistle. Walks by. As, yeah, it's also is 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 all of that stuff. And a lot of the songs, I mean, I know for most of most of the songs that have gone through there fit the scene. Yeah. Like uh, that uh what was that that one Asian song, that crazy ass Asian song when they went when that Aaron was, uh, Ape, went into the it place? was Ape something. I have it again, it's in the playlist. It's Ape something now. <laughs> I would listen to that uh, like I, I shazammed that. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yep. So yeah, um, they cut to they cut to the next scene, and it's uh Darius is eating breakfast out of a cup, which he calls breakfast, breakfast cup. And Ern says, "Nigga, you just made that up." And his Darius is this. This was just Darius's woke episode. Darius, Darius was had all the quotables. Yep. <laughs> Darius's response was, "Everything made up, nigga. Stay woke." Yeah. <laughs> uh in the me in the very in the background alfred is having a a social media war with zan and he's tweeting hard he's texting hard as fuck yeah he's looking at because zan basically has now put up that he met paperboy and basically it was that he said paperboy is trash and shit and he was just flipping through shit <laughs> he's just right. going through it so, Be so, mad. and and Ern tries to tell him which the, here's where the beginning of the Streisand effect he could have been in it so this was his moment that he could have made the decision not to, to become a part of the Streisand effect <laughs> Darius I mean Ern says to him hey man don't don't give him any attention don't don't take the bait it'll only make it worse he said leave it alone and he gives him a middle finger <laughs> and he continues to take no, the bait. Yeah, he, he says, leave it alone. And then Ern walks away. And Ern is in the other room. That's where you see him just tweeting and tweeting and tweeting. And then Ern, yeah, leave it alone. <laughs> and then he the put the middle finger. Because he knew, he, Ern knew he was still doing it. Of course. You can hear him typing. He's typing hard as shit. They cut to the next scene. And Darius and Ern are taking a trip. They're going to try to to get some money. Ern's going to try to get some money by selling his phone. And they have this conversation about AIDS. Because you see an AIDS poster and I, they, it's funny because Ern sees the poster, but I guess they both saw it because Darius just starts talking about how AIDS was invented to keep Wilt Chamberlain from breaking yes. the sex record <laughs> of Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen was sitting at like 74 or some shit like that. His sex no, record. No, 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 no. No, we're talking with Dar- uh, Wilt Chamberlain stuff is in the thousands. Well, D- Darius said he was at sixty. In, oh, in sixty nine, he would have broke it in, in sixty nine. He yeah, he would have. He would, he said sixty nine. He had the record. He said by seventy four, he like he basically by a year he would have broke it. Right. But then they but, invented AIDS, so that would stop he said, him. Right, he said right now because he's third all time. They never said who was second. Like I'm, that's the part I, I feel like it. Like, I feel like it might be Magic Johnson, but and I'm not even joking about that. I feel like it might be Magic Johnson because then Magic Johnson have like ridiculous. He didn't have, like Will Chamberlain is like legendary. Like who's Will, the one that said Will he had Ch- like twenty five thousand women or some shit like that? Like That's somebody Will. had an asinine number. Will, Was it? Is it Will? Will Will has yeah, a number, Will. and it, and people don't. And the thing is about Will's number, people don't really challenge him. <laughs> like people don't be like, oh no, his teammates would be like, nah, nah, Will. Like had Magic a Johnson lot. had folks too, but it wasn't as 
No. Yeah, like, it, know, was, like, it was. It was something. Yeah, it was something about was, L.A. Man, like Will Chamberlain passed it down to him. Like here you go. Well, um, so this conversation shifts because Ern is like, I thought AIDS was invented for what black people and gays to kill, to kill, yeah, to kill homosexuals, to kill and homosexuals, like, yeah. and there's like, yeah, that, so, yeah too. that too. So he's like, you know, two for one, huh? <laughs> he was like, yeah. <laughs> This is just the beginning of the Darius knowledge. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so cut back to Paperboy. He's looking at a video of Zan, and he's just kind of getting information on Zan at this point. Kind of like who he's is looking dude? Zan's like a uh, timeline and stuff. Yeah, he's on his IG, and there's a fucking video, and he says it's lit. He starts asking other people, and it's lit. And then he turns to the screen and he yells, "It's lit!" He's one of the most annoying type of social media personalities that you can come across. But he like really the weird is. part was then with them showing him when he was talking about Payboy, he was that that video that Payboy came across with uh, pictures of him taking his trash out. It was a video of him taking his trash yeah, out. Yeah, taking his trash out. It said right. he was like mixtapes. <laughs> like that's the part where I thought Payboy was like, I right, like, you know, it was one thing to be online stuff, but now like, you cross the line, like nigga, you stand outside my house and shit, like, you know, watching me. That that's where it turns. He different. was actually just more upset that he was making fun of his music because that's really all Zan was making fun of was his music. He wasn't talking about like the clothes he was wearing or anything. He said, "Oh look, no. I found this bag of mixtapes. Now let me put them back where they belong in the trash." Like he was talking because he that's- did his own commentary over the video that he had captured. He was just building yeah. up a drama, and he knew that he had already. He knew once he he knew he'd already baited him. Yeah. So he just kept making it worse. Um, this is where we get to a commercial break. We come back, and Darius and Ern are in a pawn shop, and they just, you know, uh, there's a song playing in the background, and this is one of the songs that I can't figure out, or maybe I did figure this one out. Uh, either way, Ern is trying trying to figure out how much way he, how much money he can get for his phone, and Darius finds a sword. And this is where the conversation of the, well, if you just want to get the yeah. money for the phone, go ahead and do that. But if you want to get more money by this sword, and then he gives him this whole breakdown about how they can flip the sword and get more money, yada, yada. Like, I mean, he think a nigga just found a katana. He really did. And there was no reference for why Darius knew that this katana was legit. Like, you know, like he, he got the katana and was like, Yo, you need to get this. He didn't give him no explanation why. Nope. <laughs> he didn't say, man, I used to authenticate these things back in the day. This is from the Ming Dynasty. He did nothing. <laughs> he, there was nothing for anybody to trust that he knew what this sword was. That's what the weed will do to you. That's what it will do. So they buy the katana. Now, my question, I just want to just want to flesh this out because somebody will correct us if we don't. Did he sell his phone and then use the money from the phone sale to buy the katana, or did he just buy the katana? He, I think he just did a straight sh- a swap. So he, he swapped swap. his phone for the phone, katana. The phone, phone for the katana. So he did yeah. some old Jack and the Beanstalks for the cow with the milk shit. Yeah. Yeah, because that's why the guy came with the papers. So yeah, it was a, it was. It's just a straight swap. swap. Okay, uh-huh. I got it. Mom told you to go sell the cow, get the money, come back to eat. Instead, you came back with some beans. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Damn, that's yeah, a stress and effect. Too. Yeah, he's gonna give 190 for it. He's like, Can I get a sword too? He's gonna do it like swap. He's like, Yeah. So he just swapped the phone for the sword. Also, if I'm saying stress and wrong for whatever reason, which I shouldn't be because we know the backstory to it, screw you. Um, all right, so cut back and <sighs> Paperboy is still way too involved in <laughs> Zan's Vine, his Instagram, and this time he's actually making fun of of the name Paperboy and how dumbed down rap is now and how Paperboy is part of the problem. And I got to agree with Zan. I relate to this one because when I was on on fucking Spotify trying to look for Paperboy's music or look for it on the internet, period, he named every Paperboy I found. Every fucking Paperboy that he named is actually on Spotify, yo. I like the oh fact God. that the show the show noticed that and used it in an episode like this name because the name Paperboy is actually generic as fuck. It really is the spelling and everything. So, I just I just love how part of the video he put the fake blood coming out of his ears. That was messed up. <laughs> that was <laughs> wow. So then the conversation in the bar starts where his boy is like, "Yo, I kind of like Zane. He's funny." 
He's like, man, shut the fuck up. And then the bartender becomes, you know, uh, God, uh, he 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 comes very involved in there. Uh, oh, the, you know, he just knows everything. Like he he just knows well, well, you know, everything. He, he, he knows them though. That's the spot he always goes to. So they all know each other. No, no, no. He's like Gandalf. Okay. <laughs> they they start talking about things, and he's like, "No, nah, never seen that boy before." But I did see there was some guys asking about you today. Car parked <laughs> outside. Seventy is charged. A Dodge Challenger, smoking a Swisher with no weed in it. Shit was creepy. He was looking for you. How did you notice all of that? Oh man, I love that. Did he notice that, all of it and kept that, that, that information? He retained that all of that the, information. That is the neighborhood quote in quotation mark watch. They know you. They people that know you like frequent the place and it's like that. If somebody comes out there, they are watching your ass. They know you. He legit said. They know Dodge. who you are. They know what car you is. Like I'd have, I'd have been in some neighborhoods with my clients. As soon as I pull in and park, and like the client I'd be, I'd be sitting there, and I look around. And I know everybody knows who. Like everybody is looking at me, and everybody in the neighborhood knows that I'm there. Right. He legit was like Dodge Challenger, seventies tan, cleaner than the Board of Health, smoking a Swisher <laughs> with no weed in it. She was creepy. <laughs> okay. Which we still didn't that. find out who that person was. Then later. He goes, oh, I know who Zan is. After they just showed him a picture of the kid, and he said I didn't know him. I know Zan. I think, I think, I think I, I know, know where he works, dude. too. Here's the address. Yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, so I didn't I didn't understand why old boy knew everything. Cut back to Darius and Ern. They have the katana. They go to the Korean spot. That's what I was talking about. They trade the katana. Is it, is it is it Korean? I believe it is Korean because the song is a, Korean, it was a he, Korean rap song. And he said he's not Chinese. He also said, um, he also said all Chinese people are short. Because of Genghis Khan. Yeah, because of Genghis Khan. Khan. Right. And they're racist. <laughs> right. Where'd you and learn that from? Racism book? <laughs> yeah, so he takes the katana in there and they buy it. Goes out back, Ern stands out back waiting for waiting for him to come out while some poor, poor Korean person is having an argument with somebody what on the phone. The, with a bunch <laughs> of goats behind it. I you know, you know, you know what's funny? I need <laughs> I'ma need somebody on the internet. I'm gonna need somebody to watch to translate. I need a translation too. I'm gonna need a tra- I'm gonna need a translation of that conversation, what was going on. It's like that whole <laughs> season of Louie where old girl was speaking a different language and then people actually went back and translated everything she says and it fit. Yeah, they like didn't I have to, to do know. that. They did, the writers of the show didn't actually have to have her saying shit that would have been said in those arguments that she was having with Louis in a different language where they didn't understand each other at all. They'll change the language. You man. have to. We're multilingual now, man. Like people. True. Uh, some somebody's going if you use the actual language, somebody's going to catch it and and be like, huh? And translate it. If you say it's a fuck shit, that shit's gonna go all over the internet. You were just saying gibberish. So they gave so for the katana. He got a mastiff, right? No, I don't know what type of dog that was. That, honestly, I mean, that, if it wasn't a if, okay, if it wasn't a mastiff, I think it's the um the the type of bit that starts the type of pit, or the type of bulldog that starts with the C. I cannot think of how to pronounce it right now. That shit was not a pit because pits are not that big. Then it was. Don't get that then pit. it was. Um, he said it at the end. I can't. I'm about to fast forward to the end of that shit. Well, at the end of it, he said. At the, I mean, he said what type of dog it was. I'm sure. I didn't yeah, write no, that part like, down. Darius said it at the end, and I can't remember what he said because I remember taking note of it because, like, the dog, and I was like, it's kind of big. Oh, my God. That dog was humongous. It's a breed of bulldog or it's a breed of pit. I cannot think because it, it is, like, banned from every apartment complex because they're fucking huge. Actually, Ashley's um aunt just got one, and the puppies, the puppy that she has is, is huge. Yeah, the dog there. God, what is it called, man? Oh, I'll cut I'm, to the next I, scene and I'll find it. Um, I'm looking it up now, so we going I got a question. Why did he call? Why did he? Why did Darius say bar fight? He said, "Come on, bar fight," before they left. Is it okay? It's a cane corso. There you go. That that's there you go. It's called a what? Cane corso. Yeah, starts I've with a C, starts with a C, right? Yep. Yep. Big ass fucking bull. They're like they're banned everywhere because they're, they're fucking huge. A cane corso. 
Yeah, it's also known as the Italian Mastiff, a large Italian breed of dog. And that's where the Mastiff from, comment comes from. From Italy. Yeah, that dog it was big as fuck. I was like, what this whole Yeah, do, do, those are the type of dogs that my girl wants. I, like, we need to farm first. I can't. Yeah, you can't have. I mean, you can try to put house. one of those in the house, but he'll tear everything I can't, up. Like, I need. We need to take. That's an outside dog. Mm hmm. <laughs> they are huge. They are. Outside. They are fucking huge, man. Um, Come back from commercial and. Paperboy is at Camelli's pizza spot where Zan actually works and he is going on a pizza delivery. So Alfred just walks up to him and Zan acts like he ain't been fucking with like that's why people online are crazy. That is what makes people on Twitter and Facebook no, and he, IG he, he, crazy, yo. Crazy. They're legit crazy. Like when you have a like when they come at you on social media like that and then you see them in person and they act like y'all didn't just exchange fuck you words via social media like there's this huge separation it's kind of like the people who can listen to r kelly's music about sex and be like i don't condone his pedophilia but i really like this booty song he just did well i was first thing where did nigga get the usher hat from <laughs> i didn't even see the, the usher what? hat the when usher he first when, when, no the extra hat when he first comes up there he has a hat for the police delivery right uh-huh oh yeah he changed. walks up to alfred <laughs> alfred knocks his hat off he sits there like, hey, man, you know, I got to deliver pizza first, so you can come with me. He pulls from his waist and puts a hat on. Why are you asking he where he... He, he clearly walks around down. with hats. He never bit down and got another hat. These like, are wait. the things that make Zan a great character the way he's shot. He does shit that is fantastical. He's but like, he's literally think, like a cartoon character. I think, so, like, Zan was surprised. I, I, I took it like this when I watched it. I took it as Zan was surprised that he was actually mad. Because Zan, when Zan was talking to him, he's like, you should be happy that I'm doing this. Right. You know, basically saying that me talking about you is going to generate listens for you. You know, because he's kind of looking at it like we both playing the game. Like, I remember he said that one. He's like, he we said both you're exploiting. He said you're using rap to exploit your life. I'm exploiting your exploitation. Yeah. He said, I'm exploiting so you exploiting. So. so that's why, like, it was never a thing where he was kind of like never a thing where he was mad at him. Or if it was if it was even personal, it was he he Zan almost almost took it like we both playing our roles. I mean, we, legit, we he's do, not we lying. We both doing our thing in this. Yeah, and, you know, he's like, why are you mad? Because at one point when I thought the scene never went there, but I thought the scene was gonna go with him talking about that was like by me trashing your stuff, it's making other people go and listen to your stuff. But that's why Alfred to threw see, out to see what I'm trashing. That's why Alfred threw out the shade room. That's why he mentioned he goes, this ain't the shade room, nigga. That's all the shade room does. Like they act like they're a like a they're like MTO, but even more blacker. And they only focus a lot of their attention on a particular subset of popular black people in music and in acting. Like you won't see anything on the shade room about like Viola Davis or anything. But you'll see everything about Black China and Rob. So I thought it was interesting that he mentioned that because that's like one of the biggest they probably have some of the most followers on Instagram. They got to be one of the Instagram accounts that has the highest followers. They got to be in like the top oh, 10 yeah, or top the 20. Oh, room is up there with Baller and all that stuff like that too on, on, on Instagram. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when, like, when, Zane tell, when, when Zane tells him that, you see this look of kind of realization come over Alfred, and then he's not really mad anymore. He's now just he's just confused. The, he's just sitting in a ride. Right, he just now he's just confused. Wondering where this little black kid came from. Which the little black kid is in Zan. Bank roll PJ. The little the little <laughs> black kid's name is Quentin, and Quentin is gonna help them. Him and Zan, he and Zan are gonna become Vine stars because hoes love this little nigga, and nope. they've been working on some well, catchphrases. That, his real name is Bank Roll PJ. Bank? Like he is, wow. And that's who he is. He is like he's like four or five. I think he's young, but. So it's a, it was a rapper here that got killed early this year called Bankroll Fresh. And, like, he was, like, one of the upcoming rappers or what have you not. And that is his nephew. And his name is Bankroll PJ. And, like, he's got a whole bunch of Vine stuff or what have you not. So how he was acting in the car is how he normally acts in real life. So that, that was felt, that felt like That felt like a thing put there for people from Atlanta. Like... Yeah, like if you're from Atlanta, like I'm doing, I'm good at school. Street went real wild, oh, you know it. Bad roll, bad roll, bad roll. Real hard nuts. 
Oh, you got Honda. Real Honda. Real Honda's though. Yeah, real Honda. Real Honda, yeah, I'm like. Yeah. Yeah. Stop playing. Stop playing. Stop playing. Bank roll, bank roll. Bank roll. <laughs> a bank roll. A bank roll when he got a lot of money though. But this is a bank roll. Nah, for real. Y'all know how I'm deep. They don't got that. Nah, they, nah this is flat one. This is real flat. blues. Real blue though. Real yeah, blue. Avatar. Nah, for real. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. <laughs> y'all know them? Save the babies. Save the babies, please. Save the babies. Like, like, look, look. Alfred had all the looks. The, his face showed all the questions I had. <laughs> Who is this little black boy? Look, he said at one Why point. Is this little black boy with you? At one point, Why Alfred was like, parents? "You boy, you better Why put on your seatbelt." Why like, he not inside the um, car seat? Cause he is. Like, he like, said you yeah, better like, put on your seatbelt. And I'm looking at this video that we just listened to, and they are legit driving, and this little kid is in the back with all this stack of cash, and he has no seatbelt on, so he just jumping around in the car, coming up to the camera, like, like, like Alfred got so many questions, but he doesn't ask them because he know they won't get answered right. You don't want the answers. <laughs> so just don't. Like, don't ask the answers. And their catchphrase for this little dude was going to be, sure I know, bitch, was going to be his catchphrase. Thank, thank God for captions. the catchphrase, which was like a catch paragraph of we don't know because it was just one long ass beep as Alfred oh, and yeah. him in shock. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so commercial and break. Back at it like, little nigga, you put the seatbelt on. You were, you were put your, he was scared to tell him, you were, put your seatbelt on. Oh. <laughs> commercial we come back and uh <laughs> quentin is on bankroll pj is delivering the pizza and wow. <laughs> zan so is zan is filming it because zan films everything because he films his whole life and the little nigga gets patted down before the dude <laughs> snatches the pizza and slams the door in his face and alfred instantly is like did he just get robbed robbed <laughs> And what I think what Zan wanted him, I think Zan, this happens a lot, clearly. And Zan was filming it, expecting Alfred to like jump in. And at this point, Alfred realizes that he is just stuck in a cycle of fuckery. He gets out, like he has been driven to somewhere. His car is back at Camille's Pizza. <laughs> he just gets out the car and walks away, which means yeah. he had to Uber back to Camille's to get his car to go home and think about the Streisand effect that he just subjected himself he just, to. He basically, like, he, he basically got to a revelation of this ain't gonna solve nothing. This type of person is beyond that type of reproach, and I'm just gonna leave. And I don't like, want to say, just, I don't know if I'm I want to save like, this little I'm, black kid. Like, he's like, I'm just gonna leave while Bankroll PJ is banging on the door, give me back my pizza. Nigga, I know where you live. <laughs> He said, nigga, I know, I know where you, you live. live. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is where we get into the, the battle of the wits and the deep between Ern and Darius because they finally they reached their final destination. Where now you he will trade in the bulldog for well, he's he's giving it to the guy, and now they're gonna get half. Selling it to a guy. He right. He sells it to. The, well, he doesn't sell it to him. He gives it to him, and uh, and the contract basically is, you take the dog, breed puppies, we get half on the puppies, and those puppies for the, and this probably is not a joke for those can course or whatever go for like two k. They're expensive ass dogs, and he's like they go for like two k a piece or whatever. You gonna get you gonna get half of that, and. The conversation goes to well when would the puppies even happen and i don't know what time like of the year it is but darius is like september and this is where Ern is like upset with darius but like he just ups he just upset but he handles it in a particular way because him and darius have grown closer which darius points out at the end of this we friends now yo and I mean, he basically knew that it wasn't darius did exactly what he did he, he realized it was his fault like he, I, he. That's why he really. I don't think he really flipped out at him. Yeah, he he's like, oh, fuck. My fault. He he did, like, but he also did try to blame Darius too. Yeah, he did. Which is yeah, why he did. Darius he tried had to say, this. And Darius looked at he Darius looked at him and was like, "Well, I told you if you need the money. I told you if you need the money, take you know, take the money." Which and they, then he sat there and, and looked at him and was like, "You right." 
they both i mean they, they both had that realization Ern and alfred both had the same face realization moment in this episode because what he says to darius is actually was actually a very real statement and it's a statement that i hear like what he said to darius was poor people don't have time for investments because poor people are too busy trying not to be poor and yes. i thought that statement i hope that statement reached a lot of people watching on the amount of levels that exist for it because it these ain't. are the same i know but these are the same fucking people that will then go and watch a dame dash interview where dame dash tells you you need to build your own company you need to invest in yourself you need to get this money and then invest the money don't let don't borrow money from nobody don't take nothing from nobody be your own boss don't never let nobody be your boss sign your own checks only pay other people but what they fail to tell you is where the fuck does that money even come from that you have to begin or to invest in like that's why poor people can't invest they don't have the money right. when people are like we need to build more things in black community like black people need to start doing for themselves our counter to white people in those situations is how when we don't have nothing to start with we don't have land you didn't give us that we don't have money you didn't give us that you didn't pay slaves so it's the same thing here like what he says to darius is very true in counter because darius didn't rebuttal what he said he basically rebuttaled his what he what he was accusing him of and Darius was like hey man I told you if you want to take the phone you need the money now take it but you wanted more money I told you I could get you more money now you have he more money he never, he never gave him a time frame nope he never said I can get you more money now Darius never asked he said like, like Darius just said I can get you more right he said, if you want it I can get you more he never said he was gonna get him more money right now like earn assumed that he was going to do that. Yep. Or assumed that it was going to be now. And that's but it was the instant, right? And that's yeah, the same can, conversation. Can we talk about like Darius though. Like that that was a, a masterful amount of things he did to turn that one ninety into yeah into two three thousand at the, at the very least. Well, he knew what like, he needed. That nigga he, flipped the shit out. Of that he shit. knew what uh -huh. he needed. He knew what he could get. What he needed to get more money for earn. Like I'm trying to, I need, I need a friend like Darius right now. Like let's roll to the pawn Nigga. shop. Yeah. Like, like I can give, can, I can give you some stuff. I know I'm, I'm gonna I, get top money for it. I, 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 I can, I can, I got enough to make some investments. But you know. And then at the end of it, Darius is like, "Here, man, just take my phone. I get a new one every month anyway, so they don't track me." <laughs> yes. He's like, and then he got back in the car. We friends now. Not a new <laughs> flip. I, I love how all of this was happening in this beautiful autumn scene of like. Oh, and then the song they played at the end, which became extremely popular the night this episode aired. Everybody was retweeting that and listening to that. See, that that song, that whole scene, the whole sh the whole way that was shot. This show, like some other shows that have become like Queen Sugar and some other shows, are shot like movies. They're not shot like cheap television shows. They're also not shot. Like television shows that require a whole lot of money to pay the cast, but still look like cheap television shows. Yeah, I mean the the, the director they got that he's working with did music videos and had never shot a TV show before. Yeah, so they were coming at it in a very unique way, and they were like, most of it was because we didn't know how to shoot TV shows. Like <laughs> like we didn't like the cinematographer for it. We didn't know, so we just kind of did. You know, the director was like, "Is this right?" And then he was like, "Uh," -huh. and they were just kind of went with that. But that's what I like because video shows are shot with a higher quality by some people. Everything ain't Hype Williams, bright and shiny and all over the place. But if you look at other other videos, like the ones that Danny, the Aesop Rock in them shot for Danny Brown in the beginning and shit, that's the way I would shoot a television show, which is why I love the way this I mean, show is shot. It, is like you can you kind of look at him and tell that it's a he did music videos because he loved like the love of aerial shots the love of always like there's always a lot of moving scenes so there's always a lot of scenes like in the car where you see the you know you see like the, the background of the city just going by and stuff like that mm -hmm. it's very reminiscent of a, of, a, of a music video which makes for and, an interesting television yeah, show to watch yeah and it and it, and it makes it because it's a is interesting because it's different because other shows aren't shot like that but it also makes atlanta as much of a character as the rest of the characters in the show 
and then like you the had the background, the, you the had background, the music, and all that stuff and... is just as much a character. Boom. I think that's why people from Atlanta love it so much because they're seeing all this stuff in the background. You know what I mean? They're seeing their city, they're seeing the places, they're seeing it kind of come alive, and it and it's being and it's his own character, which is which is great. I think that's what yeah. they're going for. So, um, and that's it, y'all. That is episode four Atlanta review. Uh, again, shameless plug. Make sure if you follow me on Spotify, you go ahead and you follow that uh, FX Atlanta playlist. I do have the link for it posted on my Twitter, in our Facebook group, which is where's my 40 xcom dot, 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 the tears of orphans. And it should be on our Facebook page as well, facebook.com slash where's my 40 acres. If you just want to get the link from me, you can also email me. You can tweet me at Phenom Black. And until episode five, which is next week, we will holler at y'all. Atlanta, the boob tube, shout out to FX, Donald Glover, you're doing amazing things. See y'all next time. Peace.